Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media. My name is Sean Walcha, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media in San Diego. We want to give a special shout out to Toast, our title sponsor of this show for believing in smartphone storytelling, believing in influence, believing in technology, um, really backing this show to get to the point where we've reached over 8 million people since we launched in January. I can't believe it. I can't believe the guests that we continue to have on. But this is a very exciting episode for me because we're talking about the influencer economy, the creator economy in life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy we learn through lessons and stories. Today we have Ray Kwan Smith, the self-proclaimed king of NIL on the show. You can find him at Ray Kwan Smith on Instagram. You can find him at Ray Kwan Smith 23 on TikTok. He has over 100,000 TikTok followers, and he is the king of NIL because he knows how to get brand deals done in this new creator economy. Raekwon, what's up? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Dude, I'm super, super excited. So I, I learned about you through The Hustle. The Hustle is a newsletter that I s- subscribe to, and uh, I was reading, and it said the king of NIL, and I could not believe someone from Norfolk State as such as yourself, an athlete, self-proclaimed had been doing the work that we talk about on this show. So not only do we tell restaurant owners the power of the smartphone, not only do we tell business owners, but this is such an exciting time where you can find and connect to people who believe in what you're trying to build, but you can also help them get awareness for their brand. Can you bring me back to the first NIL deal that you did? Um, so the first, yes. So July 1st, that's when NIL started. So we're going to rewind to uh, uh, June 30th, wherever the, the day before July 1st started. I didn't know too much about it. Uh, you know, I'm at a small school, so they didn't really give us a little background or just tell us in advance, like, oh, this thing already come out, just do that. So I'm on Instagram scrolling and I see somebody posting about it, how it's going to start. And this, and I'm like, yo. I'm a college athlete. I ain't know nothing about this. Like, why am I so late? But I remember, like, I'm not a power five athlete. My school didn't probably tell me because they probably didn't think it benefited us more as power fives. So I did my own research, take it to my own hands, and I saw that you go market yourself, basically just create content, get brand deals, you know, just be yourself and just get brand deals. And I said, well, I've been doing that on TikTok, just making videos, just promoting promote myself on Instagram and stuff. So I'm like, well, Hopefully, I get some brand deals out of this. So I came up with a format. And when I came up with that format, I DM 100 companies right at 12 o'clock when July 1st hit. I went to sleep, woke back up. Uh, three responded back, two to rejections. One was uh, Yes by Smart Cups. Smart Cups is a company where you pour water inside, you mix it around, you drink it before you go to practice. And once I got that first deal, I'm like, okay, I got one. How many more can I get? And I knew when I seen other... Uh, top athletes get brand deals by a large amount of money. I'm like, okay, I know I can't get that much money off of one brand, but if I get a lot of brand deals with the amount of money equaled up eventually. So that was my way of carrying it. And I am at 76 deals right now. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm going in the right path of doing how I wanted to do it. I'm so, I'm so proud of you, man. I can't tell you. I, so when that hustle article came out, I, I sent, I made an Instagram post, Instagram stories, um, tagged you in it, just said, you know, this is something that we talk about all the time. I mean, Howard Schultz, who started, this is for entrepreneur.com, Howard Schultz, who started the, the company we all know, uh, Starbucks, you know, the, 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 the legend is he had 242 no's. 242 people told him no, that they're not going to finance Starbucks until he finally got a yes. You know, all the greatest entrepreneurs have dealt with rejection. And when I saw that you had put yourself out there so many times and then dealt with so much rejection, yet it got you to one. One, people, they take one and then they pat themselves on the back and then they say, oh, I did it. But you didn't stop at one. You were already at 76. And when I asked you on Instagram through DM, I said, do you have any restaurant deals? And you said, no, I don't have any restaurant deals yet. I said, once you get a restaurant deal, I will book you on entrepreneur.com. I will put you on restaurant influencers. And sure enough, 
Within a month, my man is doing out a press release with Bubba's 33. This this company has 33 restaurant locations. They're in Chesapeake, Virginia. You sign them to a deal. Congratulations, man. That's uh, you're, you. you're 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 living you're living proof that the work will pay off if you're willing to put in the work. If you're willing to ask when you sign that deal, what what was going through your mind? Uh, so before. I didn't even know about the deal. I had ESPN come and tell me that they want to do a little uh, uh, documentary about how everything started and all that about NIL with me. So then I was like, okay, cool, and everything. Then my agent had texted me and said, yeah, uh, we had got a restaurant. We They want to do something with you and it's not. I'm like, restaurant? So in my head, I didn't know nothing about restaurant until like a week week before we were doing the uh, ESPN thing. And I said, what restaurant? I said, she said, Bubba Zerk. I said, what was there three? I'm, I'm, I never heard of that before. Like, where where is that at? He said, like, like ten minutes away from your school. So I took my drive from. It's actually ten minutes, literally. Like, so when I turn off here and so my seven eleven, I turn left. It's a straight shot all the way down. No turn after that. Straight shots all the way down. So it was my right side. It's, it's a big sign. What was there three? I'm like, yo, I never knew this was back here. Like, this is crazy. And when I go around, ask other. Uh, the students or people around the uh, area were like, yeah, I know Bubba Dirt 3 is good and all that's okay. So people familiar with the restaurant, so I'm like, okay, this is, might be a good partnership to solve with. So whenever I want to do a fundraiser or I want to do signing or I want to do anything with me, with Bubba Dirt 33, they know what it is and know the food is good. So, okay, I think this is a good partnership. I'm going to take advantage of this. So, yeah, and it, it was fun. I like the experience and it's definitely a, a great restaurant to eat at. So, I want to go back to the, to the hundred. Why, why a hundred? Why, why did, what, what was the number a hundred when, when the, when the NIL? So for those that don't know, NIL is name, likeness, and image. And that's something that name, the NCAA, name, name, image, and likeness. Thank you. Uh, name, image, and likeness. And that's something that has happened in the NCAA that it now allows student athletes to actually make money um, doing the things that they love to do, but create a business, which is really exciting. Can you go back and tell me why a hundred? Um, I don't know why a hundred. I just, I just did a hundred because you know I like I like even numbers, so a hundred is even. <laughs> uh, I was I won't say I was bored, but I had time. I had time just to search every every company that I like that I know. Just email it, email a DM, you know. I didn't really care about rejection because, like I said, to me, my motto is like everybody gets rejected, and like rejection is not like a no to me. It's like okay, you're not at where you want to be at right now, so keep working hard to that. That no is a yes. So you know, it's some companies that I asked back then was a no. A few months later, it was a yes. So I think all it took was the me to grow my portfolio, grow my platform, build my Instagram followers up, show them what I could do with other companies. Send that proposal to them, show you what I could do for them. And when I did that, it came to a yes. So a um, hundred companies, I just feel like that was the limit. You know, uh, as of right now, that was a limit. A hundred companies to see what what we lead at when I wake up in the morning. And what did you s- tell me about the evolution of of Instagram as well as your TikTok account? Like, when did you start creating content where you realized? This isn't just me creating a TikTok video. Maybe I can create a video and be an influencer or an ambassador for a different brand. So when I first started doing TikToks, I did it off the strength of boredness. I needed another <laughs> hobby. Uh, I put the right track that year. My coach didn't let me. So I said, I need something else to do. I can't just campaign football. I need something else to do. So I uh, one of my friends sent a TikTok in a group chat. I'm like, yo, what is this new app? Like, I never heard of TikTok. All I, I know is Musical.ly. And, you know, that's Musical.ly for real, for real. And I was like, okay, and, tr- and Triller. So I'm like, okay, what is this? What is this app? Let me let me go in here. And I've seen people just, just make videos and blow up and give views. I'm like, okay, well, this should, this, this should be easy. Like, be yourself, make videos. So I got an app. Start making videos. Uh, one of my one of my view my one of my videos that blew up was a Kevin Hart skit. The Kevin Hart skit one was like, "My mom told me to tell you da, da, that," and I was like, "Okay, it blew up." I post on Instagram, it blew up again. I'm like, "Okay, maybe I'm getting something out of this. Let, let me let me keep going." But what was that? It was like this was during like almost the pandemic. So this was before the pandemic happened happened, right? So when I was doing it, 
people found it like cringe, corny. They told me to stop. You know, you had the people that tell you like, stop doing this. Cause like, what is this? Like nobody's doing it. Like, I was the only one doing it at my school. Yep. Like, with this app. I was the only one doing it. So with me doing it, I'm like, and I don't want to have people keep talking about this. Like, I'm ready to stop because like, I don't want to keep doing it. I ain't do it for people to talk about it. I just do it because I just want, I was bored. Yeah. So, but I had my friends and my group that I met here at Norfolk State, and they was just like, nah, nah, keep going, keep going, because like it's funny. Fun, people gonna find it funny, people not gonna find it funny. You can't please everybody, you know. So with that, I was like, you know what? You're right. So then that's when the pandemic happened, and I kept making a lot of videos. And all of a sudden I blew up. But then the pandemic put everybody on TikTok. Yep. So now everybody's doing TikTok, but the people don't talk about my TikToks and talk how TikTok is this and that. Now they're doing TikToks. Yep. And they asking me to make videos with them and this and that. But they were just talking how bad and all this about TikTok. So, you know, it comes to show that, you know, I won't say I started TikTok wave at Norfolk State, but I definitely put an impact on TikTok and definitely put it in the right direction and people using it now because now TikTok is really a big app that everybody uses just for platform growth, you know, just to, you know, just to uh, show themselves, you know, get their followers up on Instagram because uh, that's what I do now for. I just use my TikTok followers to build my Instagram platform. Um, so, you know, it comes to show that, you know, credit's going to come when it comes, when you blow up. But when yeah. you're down, they, when you're down, they sound, but when you're up, they loud. So, you know, that's just something I learned. That's something I, I, I built. That's something I had to grow. I can't argue with everybody. I can't try to please everybody. So, you know, that's just something you just come with bro. Cause I was only like uh, 19 at the time. I'm 21 now. So, you know, I grew a lot from that. So. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to welcome our newest sponsor to the show. And that is Davo Sales Tax. Davo is an incredible company. I remember when we first opened up our restaurant in 2008, Cali Barbecue, we were struggling to figure out how to automate sales tax, how to have enough money in our account to file our quarterly taxes. I am so grateful that now, today, we have found Davo and they are a sponsor of the show and they are excited to help other business owners no longer have to become tax collectors. Davo does it all for you. They take care of the compliance, they take care of the collecting, they take care of the filing. Get your first month free by going to davosalestax.com slash influencers. Let them know that we sent you. Davo is an incredible company. We're grateful to have them on the show. They integrate with all the top POS companies, including Toast. davosalestax.com slash influencers. Automate your sales tax today and get back to running your business. Tell me about the haters, because I think it's something that you know, it takes courage to put yourself out online. You know, it's something that I talk to business owners. We do this show to teach people that, you know, eventually you start to put in the reps and it's just like anything like a sport, just like business, just like content. When you're putting in the reps little by little, you learn how to make better videos. You learn how to post better. You learn the different platforms, but in the beginning, you know, everyone's talking shit. Like everybody's talking shit, especially for business owners. And I mean, even if, even for you as a student athlete, people are like, what are you doing, Raekwon? Why are you doing that? Why are you wasting your time? I mean, I've seen posts on both your Instagram feed and your TikTok feed of coaches saying, Hey, Raekwon, what's your problem? Why can't you focus on what you should be doing? Now, looking back, being on entrepreneur.com, being on USA Today, being on, on ESPN, like this is just the beginning for you of truly something bigger than being an athlete. You know, you have the opportunity to make an impact on student athletes for generations to come. For you, looking back on those haters, what, what would you say to them now? Uh, it's a lot to say, <laughs> but there's nothing to say. They see the work, they see everything I'm doing now. All they can say is congratulations or say nothing. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I people been talking about me since I was little. All this I used to tell people all the time, like, look, I'm gonna be something big. I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be that. Like, look, I'm gonna be this and that. Like, I've been saying since I was young. Like, people be like, nah, they be like, nah, nah, no, you're not all that stuff. Like, but people knew like I, I was gonna do it because I told myself I was gonna do it every day because like, I just feel like I was gonna do it. And you know, when it comes to the coaching side, the coaching side is like my coach. You know, I ain't say his name, but you know he is. Like, <laughs> came my DM and said. Hey, why you not playing this? Why you not playing well? 
Uh, maybe this is distracting you and not distracting you. And I told him, like, you know, up front, nothing distracting me. I know my top priority. I know school, sports, and that was, it, that's my top priority. But I'm not going to play well when I'm only getting five carries a game. So then I told him, like, either I'm going to get more carries or I'm going to take, like I told him, I'm taking every out time getting with my carries. So, you know, and when he said I was distracting to the team, this and this and that, and it shows that I was never a distraction because the team is even doing worse than they did last year. So maybe it won't me. It was maybe it had something to do with you. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he's a good coach when he wanted to be, but when he felt like I was distracting the team, he's only picking and choose what I wanted to do, football, NIL, or league, or somewhere else. I just left. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like, you're not going to stop from doing what I want to do with my money, especially when it's benefiting me and other student athletes around the country. You're not really stopping me from doing what I want to do. And when I made a little TikTok about how I want how my coach feel now, because like, look what, me, look what I'm doing now. I went from you some distraction. Well, if I'm a distraction, why ESPN want to talk to me? Why US, USA want to talk to me? Why news companies want to talk to me? Why am I getting, it, it had, had, I was doing something right. So for you to say I was a distraction to the team and distraction to that, I won't because I was my team biggest fan when I was hurt. I got hurt game four and I was still cheering on my team with the every game, make sure the team was good, this and that. So I want a distraction. I'm just doing what I need to do. So we can win games. So uh, just back, just piggyback on the haters is like, don't just block them out. Cause at the end of the day, like people are gonna hate regardless. If you're doing yeah. some good or bad, they're gonna hate because that's what people is. You know, people just, the people are people, you know, you just gotta deal with it. So the more you just be like, okay, they don't, they don't mean, they don't mean nothing. They're not putting money in your pocket. They're not feeling family. They're not benefiting you or people around you. So why care what they say? I can easily hit a, hit a, uh, turn my comments off. If I want to, but no, I'm not turn my comments off because I want them to say something. You know why? Come keep putting them every time with each post. Yep. So that's that, that, that's my, that's why I turn my comments off because I want them to see every post I do. I want people to see the comments and see people talk about me. Cause you know why? People that ride with me, people my friends, they gonna they gonna stick up for me. I ain't gonna yeah. say nothing because they are gonna do it for me. So I ain't gonna say nothing. I just let it post, let it sit. Like every comment, I like every comment. This is me. So <laughs> that's just me. I, I like everybody comment, no matter if it's good or bad. I like it. Yep. I love it. Uh, can you, can you tell me about your content creation process? Tell me like, what, what are you trying to post a video a day, multiple videos a day? What, what's your, what's your schedule? What's your cadence? Uh, content for me is very simple. I post throughout the day. Uh, I keep content, I keep content simple. I don't make it too hard when content you, you put too much thought in content, it don't turn out too good. Yeah. When you just make it freely and just offer your strength of your mind, just come freely. It's good. Uh, I try to post two or three a day. Um, if I can on each platform. Well, where I put on TikTok, I post on Instagram. So, so you, probably, you start on, with you start with TikTok and then you go Instagram. So I go from TikTok to Instagram to yep. Snapchat to Facebook. If it's good enough, I might post on LinkedIn. If it's really good, enough, I might put it to Twitter. So I try to get to every every platform I can get to uh, as possible because you never know which platform is gonna blow up on. How's Snapchat doing for you? Snapchat is up and down. You know, I don't. Snapchat is really a I don't use that much because yeah. you know that's it's, it's very always me. But I just be on it sometimes. You know, I don't really be on that much. But when I do post, and I got I do got people that support me on there, so I do post a lot because they do want to see what I'm doing too. For the people that do have Snapchat but don't have Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, it's up and down sometimes. Um, but with the content, it's like, it's very simple. You know, um, try to do two or three a day. I will make content today. Probably will post it to next week. You, you know, I make content early and they're posting next week because I don't want to put everything all in one day. Yep. Try to, you know, certify and try to uh, keep people guessing. How did you get the name King of NIL? Uh, I was on Twitter one day. I was scrolling and I went to my <laughs> quote tweets and somebody had said, this dude is really the King of NIL. And I'm like, oh, that thing sounds nice. Let me screenshot it since my agent. When I said my agent, I was like, look, we have to we have, we get your news right now. Like, before Smell take it. And I post, a, I post something on it. I said, yeah, I'm the king of NIL. And people started talking about it and everything. Like, oh, this dude might be the king of NIL. And it started blowing up. And that's when people started calling the king of NIL. And I just ran with it. And now when you look on Google, you'd be like, who's the king of NIL? And it, it pops up, Raekwon Smith. So, you know, I just feel like, you know, uh, I'm doing everything I said I was going to do when I was younger. And it's really coming true. You know, I'm not even nowhere near what I want to be at come 21. So I still got a lot to go. What do you want to be? <laughs> I just want to, I just want to be Ray Quartz. I just want to, I want to leave a legacy, you know, when, when, when I'm, when it's over and over in time, like I want everybody to know who I was and what I did and how did I change the culture of 
you know, college sports and how I was just helping everybody as much as I can. So right now, are you taking any business classes? Uh, no, I was a business management major my sophomore year, but it was just too much math. Uh, so I switched to mass communication. Uh, I'm a graduate in the spring so last summer, and then I'm going to go to grad school to be a sports management major for my master's. So, uh, no, I'm not taking business, no business well, classes. But so I have history it's, about it because I had a... Well, it's interesting because I went to I went to the University of Colorado and I graduated from University of San Diego, but I thought that I wanted to be a business major, but the classes that I took didn't inspire me. So I ended up being mm -hmm. a sociology major. Yet now when I'm doing business, the work that you're doing with your brand, with these NIL deals, you're learning more business than any other business class could teach you all across the nation. Now you're getting asked to go speak at other universities. What kind of questions are student athletes asking you about, about when you go and you speak? Um, so I just recently went to Virginia State uh, University last week and the question Joe was asking was about um, how, did, how did I get started? Um, how, how did I get in contact with my agent? How did we, how did I get an agent? What, do, what is it like during tax time? How do you control your taxes? Um, how do I make content? You know, uh, I didn't really get that much questions, but the, the stuff I was doing was trying to really educate them on how they could get deal. Cause you know, you know, Virginia State is a D2 school. You know, they feel like a lower, lower, lower school than North State. And they feel like they probably can't get brand deals, but it don't matter what school you go to, you can get brand deals anywhere you want because my dude from D3, you know, Jack Betts, he, he go to um he goes to D3 school, but he get brand deals just like me. You know, he asked me back in February, how did I do this, how to do that? I sat down, talked to him, he took the knowledge that I gave him, and now he's doing it his own, you know, yeah. and, he, and he called himself the the king of 3D, the king of 3D, 3D, yeah, 3D, no. D3 NIL. <laughs> yeah, King of D3 NIL. You know, um, I was, I like the name because it came from me and he you know he always give me credit every time somebody asks him. We get yeah. the name from and everything, you know. And me and him, we close friends, you know, we talk on a daily basis every day, just make sure he's good, I'm good. If I got anything questions, or if I need something I need to know, I might go to him, he might ask me questions. So we both use each other at once, you know. So he's down here in football camp right now, so we don't talk that much, but Football season, but we still talk on a daily basis if we need anything. But yeah, but it just shows it shows if you're not a market so if you're not a really talk to somebody, really not a um come to profession to a business, you could anything can happen. Like your talk game is more is probably the most most game that you didn't know. You gotta talk to somebody because absolutely that's, that's gonna really uh separate yourself from anybody else. Absolutely. Now uh how how and why did you get a, an agent? Uh I got an agent. Because I knew I had a lot going on. I knew I was playing football. I knew I was doing it right. I knew I had a social, a soul, a social life. I knew I was in a fraternity. I knew I had a lot going on, and I knew that if I had, if I added NIL, plus getting deals, plus reading contracts, plus doing all that comes with it, I won't have no time for it. So me getting an agent just basically took some took some stress off me halfway to let him handle it. So all I do to worry about is, um. Reading the contract, doing the content, and simple. I reach out to companies when I feel like it, uh, but most time they come to him or they reach out to him. Uh, so yeah, I put too much stress on me so I could focus on what I need to be focused on, and that's school, sports, and trying to graduate. If you are a restaurant owner and a bar owner and you're listening to restaurant influencers, don't you wish there was a way that I could immediately save your business money and give you better content in your bar or restaurant? We have the answer, Atmosphere TV. Go to atmosphere.tv slash BBQ for your free activation to help you add content to your existing bar, to existing restaurant, as well as help you cut the cord on some of these subscription packages, these big bulky channel offerings that you no longer need. America's Funniest Home Videos, Chive TV, Angry Birds, you name it, Atmosphere TV has the content to keep your guests engaged, and they have an incredible ad-supported network that allows you to not only market within the four walls of your bar or your restaurant, but also to local partners. 
atmosphere.tv slash bbq incredible platform an incredible partner we can't be more excited go to atmosphere.tv slash bbq and let them know restaurant influencers sent you I think one of the most important things when you're doing sales like you are, when you're doing the outreach in the beginning, and then you get somebody to say yes, now they said yes, but now you have to live up to the promise. So whatever you've agreed to, you've got to go above and beyond for that brand mm-hmm. partnership. And, you know, I was, I was doing my due diligence reading up about you and you, what you had learned is that you didn't want to do one-off deals anymore. And I think that's something that's very important for the content creator economy is that when you start to lean into creating content for brands, you can get free products. Free products will only get you so far. That doesn't actually get you revenue. When was the first time that you went from free product to actually getting revenue? My seventh deal, and that was with East Bay. Uh, when East Bay came through my DMs and said they wanted me to be on the Be The One Athlete commercial, thought it was fake. You know, uh, why East Bay want to party with me? Like, I'm, I'm a nobody, like, why, why are you on a party with me? So when I said to my agent, he didn't like, whoa. So we reached out to East Bay, they was actually serious. We talked, they sent all this stuff. I made my video and it blew up, you know, uh, first HBC athlete to uh, sign a, like a, a endorsement with a shoe giant. And you know, when that came out, it just like, yo, who is this dude? Like, Nova State, like, where's Nova State? Who is Rayquan Sun? It, it's all these who's and who's and you know, who is this dude, who is that? Like. So, you know, that's when everybody started watching my page, make sure everything was good. So with that type of attention, it's like, okay, I got to clean my Instagram. I got to clean everything up. I got to make, make stuff professional. Because now you know, you know you don't know who's viewing your page now. Yeah. So now I got to make sure everything is precise and everything is good. Keep up to date. Don't post nothing crazy. Because now everybody's looking at you. You don't want nothing crazy on your page. So now you just be more professional. And that's what I do now, you know, um, try to be more professional what I do. Because uh, you, don't, you never know who's viewing your page. And that can really suffer yourself from getting this deal or not your page, you know, uh, social media. So that's great advice. Yeah. Anybody that's, that's listening to this, that's young, it's great to be young and to be carefree and post things that you, you know, think are funny, but if you actually want to be serious and you want to create, you know, a revenue stream and a business for yourself outside of college, outside of sports, um, it is very important because you never know who's watching. That's so mm-hmm. true. Can you tell me about uh, one of one of the the most fun you've ever had creating content for for a company? Um, so many, so many, so many, so many. You're what? What are you at now? How many deals? Seventy six. 76 deals. All right. When this, when this, when this episode publishes, which will be in about a month, you'll probably be over a hundred, right? I might be. Over, might be. Yeah, we'll see. Nah, I say 80, maybe. 80. Yeah. Uh, Cause I'm really working on, um, work, I'm leaning to working on like uh long-term deals now, not yep. short-term deals no more. So, you know, it, that's a little, the quality if of the, it's the quality of the deal. Yeah. So it's a little, if it were some companies with the long-term deals, but that's what I want. So that's yep. what I want. I want to try to get. Yep. Um, what was the question? The question yeah. was the create the 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 best. Some give me a oh, story. Oh yeah, the best, about the best story. that I had yeah. Yeah, give me uh, a- I feel like all my I feel like all my content was the best content because I just be myself throughout the day. I I will have my content on. I dance. I do a little dance, or you know, I wear content, and make videos. Anything I do is very fun and creative. Uh. My best one well, might have to be the East Bay one just because it was a commercial and I was actually official with the East Bay. He posted me on their page and everything. I felt official. So uh, that was probably my, my fun best one just doing because like, I was having fun doing it. I was doing football stuff. I was being myself. Um, but it was so many deals. and so many concerts I did. I can't remember each deal. I, I can't remember each concert I did for each deal. Uh, but I would say all, all of them it was so fun. I- so I know from your bio um, that you lost your father. Um, yes. Can you tell me kind of how, how do you how do you feel now knowing the knowing the work that you're doing? Would would he be proud of you? Uh, so uh, I lost my father when I was twelve years old. I was in seventh grade, very young. So uh, you know, with him, you know, he he ran track, played football, almost he made it to the league, but he got hurt before he got to the league. So it's just some stuff that's like. 
he was a businessman too. He liked his money. He was a person, him and my mom made sure like, if anything, we're going to learn how to invest, make sure we find that, like, make sure you're not taking care of your money and all that stuff. You're just good with your money. So that's one thing I learned from him and from my mom, just like, make sure you go your money. So uh, if he was here now, he would be definitely proud. You know, it'd be, it'd be, he'd be very proud because like, he would see like, that I'm really doing, you know, where he expect me to be doing. Like, he expect me to do this. Like, I don't think no one else expect me to do this, but I know he expect me to do it because he knew the person I was coming to be, you know, I was very, it was come, young, it was very little rough, you know, with the circumstances that we was in, but you know, I told myself that I was gonna take care of it eventually because I knew where I wanted to be in life. I knew uh, where I wanted to achieve and be when I get older. And I think I'm on the right path for doing it. You know, still got a lot to go, but I think I'm on the right path. What kind of advice would you give to restaurant owners or business owners that are looking to partner with student athletes to do NIL, NIL deals within their local communities? Like if they identify somebody that's, you know, at a university, what, what works and what doesn't work? Uh, the biggest thing for restaurants is um, the big time athletes ain't always the good people to partner with, you know, not to say not to go wrong with the big time athletes, but the big time athletes have a little like, okay, y'all can partner because I'm big time. They're not partner, they partner because they're big time, but the people that's at a smaller school, if you partner with them, yeah, they don't have that much followers right now, but they'll give you more work. They'll post more, they'll do more than the big time athletes because they feel like they have such a big status that they ain't got to do all that. So, you know, uh, you, they, Bubbles 33 part of Norfolk State. Cool. Now, if they had a partner with ODU, well, ODU would have gave the same type of, same type of, uh, Posting content wise that I did just because they had a bigger school, you know, you never know because they didn't do it. They, they went to somebody they felt like they were going to post more, actually be engaged with the customers, be engaged with the partnership and everything. So, what I would say is just uh, take a chance on the small people, small schools, you know, don't, you don't always got to go to the big schools because they got big social media followers. You know, small, small followers is actually more better because not such a chance they know all their followers. They know their followers will probably support them. So yep. the big time followers, they probably don't know half their followers. Yep. So you just you post them, but they don't probably don't live in the state you in, or they probably don't name near you, or they probably can't go to Bubbles Earth Three. So you know, just take a chance on the small people, small schools, because they probably have a better chance of just posting and just actually being more serious into the partnership than the big time schools. That's great. Yeah, anybody that's uh, that's listening to this, we uh, we appreciate the support. Thank you for listening to the show. It means the world to us. Um, please subscribe. Please write a review. But every single Wednesday and Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, we do a weekly call on the social audio app Clubhouse. So if you're listening to this, please join us on Clubhouse. You can join us on stage. You can tell us your story. Um, we appreciate that. And uh, we always do a social shout out during these shows. And this this week's social shout out is going to go to Jesse Matthews, who is the starting wideout captain of the Aztecs on SDSU. Um, shout out to him and his dad, Thomas Matthews. They are both trying to, to do to do NIL deals here in San Diego. Um, I've uh, developed a friendship with them trying to, to help them. You can find him at Jesse Matthews underscore. Um, but I, I told him about you. Um, I, I've sent them the information. I've talked to multiple universities when I talk about influence and I talk about marketing. Uh, you're the name that comes up. So that's that's uh, it's very impressive to me the work that you're doing. Um, the question that I had from uh, from Thomas Matthews was uh, in San Diego we like to think we're a small city. We like to think that we're you know kind of a smaller school, Mountain West. What what kind of advice do you have to athletes in smaller markets to get NIL deals? Uh, for real, to take advantage of that small market. If it's a, if you feel like it's a small area, small market, go to each small company around that market, come to them with a, a proposal of what, they, you, what you could do for them and what they could get out of it, you know, because that's the biggest thing. That you could put, they could probably try one, but in their mind, like, hey, what am I getting out of it? So if you come to them on, like, this is what I could do for y'all and this is what y'all get out of it, I see, no, I see no question why they won't say yes. So my biggest thing is, if y'all in a small area and small community, go to each store you could go to to find somebody 
that's gonna partner with you because you never know who's gonna say yes and who knows who's gonna say no. So that's my advice. Where did you get your relentless Mamba mentality? Uh, you like the fifth, sixth person I always say that, but I, like I said, I like I tell everybody else, I just think it's common sense. I just think I know what I want to do. I feel like everything's common sense in, 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 some, in some form of fashion, a, a, a shape. So uh, everything's common sense to me, you know, if you want to be something big, you're going to be a business, you got, you got to know what you need to do, you know, you got to not approach people. So I feel like it's common sense, you know, and just probably watching movies and seeing how other people do, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, it's just in my mind. It, it can't go nowhere. So. So when you, uh, when you look back five years from now on this entrepreneur, our, uh, you know, this video, this podcast, this show, um, and you look at it and I'm going to ask you, well, what do you want to accomplish by the time you're 20, 28 years old? You're what, 23 or 21? 21. 21. So by the time you're 26, by the time you're 26, what kind of deals are we talking about? What's yeah, Raekwon be, Smith doing? I should be in the NFL playing for a running back team somewhere. Okay. That's why I should be at 26. I should be playing football at the pro level, you know, making more, getting more deals and everything. And actually, uh, with my free time, I travel around to different schools to help other athletes. That's because I know NL is still going to be around to help other athletes to let them know my story and how I became this and this and that. And hopefully, it's going to be another king in NL soon eventually, you know. Hopefully, I could pass on my legacy somebody else you know and hopefully they can do the same thing i did so and here is i hopefully um I'm, 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 I'm a big history legend and I, I actually help people grow and help people uh inspire people to be the next king of nil that's awesome so if you guys want to connect with me it's at sean p walchef s-h-a-w-n-p-w-a-l-c-h-e-f and that's on linkedin tiktok instagram twitter uh, Facebook. We appreciate you for following the show. Ray Quan Smith, the king of NIL. You can find him at Ray Quan Smith on Instagram. You can find him on TikTok at Ray Quan Smith 23. Uh, you can find him on Twitter. You can find him on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to know anything about NIL, if you want him to speak at your school, if you're ready to pay for him to do a brand deal, his DMs are open. Uh, he is uh, Raekwon, seriously, man, I, I can't wait. I can't wait in five years when you're on an NFL team to have you back on the show. I'm super proud of you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. You're inspiring a whole generation of student athletes, not just here in the United States, but all over the world, that if you can do it at Norfolk State, you can do it anywhere, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. We'll catch Thank you guys. You. We will catch you guys next week. Thank you for following the show. Please subscribe, write a review. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Thank you. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more and be sure to check out Toast.